Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome back to ClayShare Con 2023. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and we are in the afternoon of day three. Whew, so much great stuff has already happened throughout the entire conference, and we got so much more yet to come. We have Michael Harbridge who's going to join us, and he's going to show you how to create with leaves. And I got my giant leaf back out because, you know, it was going to happen. All right, we'll talk about leaves more with Michael. So let's go on over and see how he's doing. Hey, Michael, how you, how you doing? Hey, Jessica. Good, how are you doing? We are great. We're so excited to have you here with us. Glad to be back. I appreciate the opportunity. And I just want to say um, how much, I know that you inspire a lot of your viewers with lots of ideas, and you've inspired me with many things. And um, But you did inspire me with something and when we bought the, the formal leaf company, um, I was thinking about different markets that we could go into that I was like, okay, if the pottery market ever dies, which it doesn't appear that's ever gonna happen, but I was looking at like the concrete industry. And so last year we poured a new driveway and a new walkway and I pressed the leaves into the concrete and got really cool impressions. So I'm like, that would be another market we could go into. And then I looked at the cake decorating market using the leaves with fondant. And, and that would be another opportunity for us. And then when I saw you opening the package of the big leaves that I sent you and you were holding it up, talking about it as like a, a swimsuit or clothing, I was like, <laughs> well, there's a whole nother opportunity. So I did put together, um, I did rig up a, an outfit here that I will, that I will model. <laughs> and it, it's got the, the front piece. I'm going to put the camera down so you can see a little bit better. So it does have the front oh piece, goodness. but I also attached a back piece to it. And this is just the <laughs> prototype that it's not, you know, totally done yet, but it does have a little back <laughs> covering a leaf. <laughs> and the front covering. So um, oh, I love it. we made it with really <laughs> sparkly, sparkly string. And then, you know, I got thinking about it and I thought, well, everything is always about <laughs> Jessica and it's never about Kevin. So, oh, um, poor Kevin. <laughs> so I was like, you know, we'll maybe call that the Jess Keeney. And then I was thinking, like, you know, does Kevin like a Speedo? Does he like a thong? You know, what, <laughs> what is he into? And so we came up with this one that we'll call the, the Kevkini. And it just <laughs> has... <laughs> I will not model this, but I think you get the idea. And we did the sparkly, the sparkly straps on that. Yes, so very like nice that, those straps. <laughs> yes, yes. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, and then so the next I'll, step is to make them out of clay and wear them. Yes. Yeah, they <laughs> might they be a little move. bit tighter fitting if you, if you do it out of clay, <laughs> a little shouldn't. uncomfortable if you try to bend over. But I, I just had to have a little fun with it because it cracked me up when I saw you holding that up. And I was like, the shape of that leaf <laughs> honestly is perfect for that. I had never thought of that. So thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> when I make a million dollars selling rubber leaf bikinis, I'll share some of the profits with you. All right. You just can problems. lifetime supply of rubber leaf bikinis is all I need. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So today we are going to, I'm going to show you several different techniques using leaves and, and we're working with the, I'm working with the rubber leaf forms and um, we were a distributor for formerly for many years. And I kept asking them to come out with bigger shapes and bigger shapes. I'm like, big bowls and stuff you know we could sell these big leaves and so they they came out with a large rhubarb leaf and this was as big as they went and once i i bought the company and i went and saw their operation and how everything was done i understood why they only went to this size because the ovens that these are baked in could only fit this was the largest that would fit in there so we've invested quite a bit into the company where we can get really big leaves like this and one of them I'm going to work with today is the giant rhubarb leaf. And this is the biggest leaf that we have so far. This one hasn't been trimmed. So a little bit about the process. These are all cast in molds. They're made from real leaves. So this was a real leaf that was in our garden, a rhubarb leaf. And I was telling Jess that we grow the rhubarb leaves, or I, I was growing rhubarb for years, just to get big leaves. And the bigger the leaves got, the woodier the rhubarb got. And, and friends of ours would come over and they'd say, oh, you got to cut that rhubarb. It's, it's going to get woody and it's not going to be good. And I don't really like rhubarb. I just really like the leaves. Um, so this was made from a, a leaf in our garden. And we're going to be coming out with some more sizes of this as well during the year. But these are cast, um, they're baked, and then they get hand trimmed. 
So all of the leaves have areas around them that get cut away. So um, there's a lot of work that goes into these leaves. Um, and the rubber material, we had a hard time getting that initially. We've got about a two year supply of it now. So I think we'll be good for a little while um, with that material. And so we keep coming out with more and more leaves. I just got a message from somebody right before um, we went live asking if we were gonna have elephant ears. And I went to a greenhouse and bought all kinds of plants and I'm letting them grow and get nice big leaves on them. So elephant ears, we're planning to come out with three sizes of those this year. We've got some really cool big pumpkin leaves that we're coming out with, great for bowls. And I'll show you guys today um, some of the other new designs. We also did a bark texture and we're gonna be doing some that have like a wheat texture and different things on them as well. Um, so we got a lot of stuff planned for this year, lots of new designs. So that big leaf that we were showing you, this one here, some of you might look at that and say, well, gosh, I can't fit something that big in my kiln. So you might think of that as, you know, a bowl that you would do a big slab of this leaf and put it in a form, um, or they'll work too over uh, Jeff's GR pottery forms. You can drape them over those. Um, but I took that same leaf there and I draped that to make it into a bowl. So if your kiln isn't big enough for that big leaf, and I did bring a tape measure because I know somebody- <laughs> Like I said, right? Because I was like, my kiln's yeah. not big enough, but this now I have no complaints. See, yeah. you, but Michael, the whole point was I wanted a new big kiln. See, I have to say these things to get the big kiln. Right, and Drew just told everybody it's only, it's not that long of a wait now in kilns. So if you guys order your <laughs> kilns now and then order the leaves, you should be set. You'll get them about the same but, time. There you yeah, go. Yeah, So exactly. like that, that big leaf I just measured and it is- 25 inches and so 20 25 inches is about as big as we're going to be able to go with the leaves so that'll be the largest leaves that we'll have unless if i invest in some really gigantic ovens for baking these um but when we drape it into a bowl like that it cuts down about 10 inches on there so think about the leaves and doing draping which is one of the things i'm going to show you um, i'm going to show you just simple um, designs where you press the leaves in um, I'm going to show you making just regular leaf forms. Now, this was one that was draped in a bisque bowl, um, which we probably all have some, some bisque bowls. And this one was raku fired. Um, we've got, and this is, and these are two of the new designs. These are two uh, pointed sunflowers. And this one was done with the gloss raku oh. glaze. This was done with a matte raku glaze. Um, and the, the big one behind me here is the, the big rhubarb leaf. Um, and then this is the smaller rhubarb leaf that Jess was showing as well. So um, lots of different opportunities, but I'm going to show you how to use the leaves to make just leaf impressions and make bowls out of them. I'm going to show you how to drape those big leaves into bowls and into more of a vase type shape. And I'll show you how to make individual leaves as well. So I'm going to flip the camera down and I've got some clay rolled out here and I'm going to show you a real simple way to do this using smaller leaves and just making impressions. So I can just take a, a slab of clay, any shape that I want, and I can lay different leaves onto that surface. And then I can roll or press them. And we'll find something small here to go on the side. So I can take and I can press these, I can roll them through the slab roller, but one of the things that I like to use is a washcloth. And the reason I like to use this is that it has texture on it. And I can take that and I can press over the top of this. And this way, around the edges of the leaves, I don't get fingerprints of where I've pressed in. Or if I go with a, a rolling pin or run this through the slab roller, if I get any bumps or imperfections around the outside of these leaves, um, I don't need to worry about that because this towel adds a nice little texture to it as well. The other option is then you could take this and press it over um, the bark texture pad. And so the bark texture pad is something that we added earlier this year. And this actually came from an oak tree in our backyard that we got this texture off of it and made a mold and made this flexible form. Some of you had gotten our first version of it was a bisque piece of that bark. 
And now we actually pour it in rubber, so there isn't any problem with that breaking and shipping. But I can take this with the leaves facing down, and I can press this into the bark texture, which will give it the bark texture in the background, but will also leave the leaf impressions into that surface. And I'm using the towel on the back side of this as well, just because it gives a nice texture. If I try to roll with a rolling pin over this, because this is kind of bumpy because of the texture that it's picking up, um, I won't get real good impressions of the bark texture. Once I've pressed that in there, I can take and peel that away. And now I've got the bark texture in there, and I've also got the leaves. And I can take a needle tool and just lift the leaves out from this. And I'll have my leaf impressions with the bark texture in the background. Some of you saw the, the one that I did for Jessica doing the bird houses, and we did this technique and then pressed it into molds. In this case, I'm just going to press it into a bisque bowl. So this is just a commercial bisque bowl. You could have something that you've thrown and you've bisque fired. As long as it's like fired to 04 or cooler, you're good to just put the clay on top of this because the bisque will absorb moisture and um, it won't stick. Now, if you've got something that's high fired um, to like cone five, cone six, cone 10, that's not going to work to put the clay in there because the clay is going to want to stick to it. And I'll talk in a couple minutes about how to deal with that. But I can take and kind of lift the edges of this as I kind of work this down into my bowl form. And I don't worry about the edges on this. I like that very rustic looking edge on this piece. And I don't want to force this down in that I stretch the clay. And that's why I'm lifting up on the edges as I kind of work this down into the bottom of the bowl. Now I can leave it real square like this, or I can take and I can kind of lift up in some areas and give this a little bit more character. And then I can just let this dry in the bisque bowl. Um, I want to be careful that I don't have the clay wrapping around the edge, because as this dries in the bowl, it's going to shrink. And anything that, that goes over the edge of that bisque form and wraps around tight is going to get caught and you're probably going to get cracking there. So make sure that you've got the edges lifted up over the edge of that bowl. And just let that dry, fire it, do your glazing process on it. Got questions, Jess? So folks are loving this. They never thought of using the leaves with the bark layering like you did. Um, and I think it's genius. And let's see, someone wants to know if the leaves have any latex in them. The, the leaves do not have latex. We did check with uh, the manufacturer, uh, and fortunately, there is no latex in them. Wonderful. All right. Now, I pre-rolled out a big slab. This is the large rhubarb leaf. And one of the things with these large leaves is they have really thick veins on them. And so when you press this into the clay, that area presses way in, and sometimes it'll actually come through on the other side of your slab, depending how deep it is. The rhubarb and this burdock has really deep veins on it. And so what will happen if I just roll this slab and I drape it in a bowl or drape it over a form and it dries, usually where that big, heavy, thick vein is down the middle, you'll get cracking. So I'm going to show you how to eliminate that from happening when you've got really deep veins. So I'm just going to go along. And, and this technique is the same for any leaves that you want to actually make like a big bowl or a big vase with. You're going to go around, you're going to roll your slab, you're going to press the leaf into it or run the leaf through the slab roller. And then I'm just cutting the clay around the edges to get this most of this excess clay away. We'll clean up this edge here a little bit. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to flip this over. And the reason I want to do that is for a couple of reasons. 
I need to add clay where that main vein is. So I've got another rhubarb leaf here that I'm gonna kind of lay on top of this. And you can see that this, this vein right here is really thick. It also has a couple of them that go out here that are, are rather thick as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of draw a little line like here is where that, that main vein is. And then I'm gonna have another one going up about here and another one that comes out right here. And I can tell that because look at where all those veins meet on the bottom here. They all come out right at the edge of that main vein. So I just draw those little lines on there because then I'm gonna take and make a coil of clay and I'm gonna roll that coil out or I could use my hand extruder and extrude the coil out. And this coil we're gonna add to that area so that it takes care of that thin area where that main vein is going to be. I'm gonna roll this one out a little bit more and add this to the top area. I'm going to do another coil in these coils. You want to have them a little bit bigger than what that vein actually is so that you can get enough thickness there so that the piece doesn't want to crack in that area. All right, once I've got those placed on there, I could score, I could add slip or magic water in there, but because I'm gonna mash this into the clay, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna take um, my finger, my thumb, and I'm gonna work my way along here and squish this right into the back side of the leaf. And I'll do that on each side of that coil. Michael, how thick is the slab that you started with for that leaf? So the slab that I started with for this leaf is close to a half an inch. Um, and you can go, you know, as thick as you want with that. But wherever that vein is, where that thick vein is, it's going to make that area thinner than the rest of the leaf. And you will have problems with it cracking if you don't add clay to the backside like this. Just work my way up to the top here and work my way back down the other side. And at this point, I'm not too worried about getting it perfectly smooth because then I'll go back and I'm just running two fingers along the side of this to smooth this out. I don't like to add a lot of water to clay in workshops, if I have water on the table and sponges, people are giving their clay a bath and they just turned it into mm -hmm. muck. And so a lot of times I don't put water out or I will give them just a damp sponge to work with so that they don't overdo it, which is what I'm going to grab here. I've got a bucket with a sponge and I'm just going to go over that to smooth it, but I'm not getting it sopping wet. So there is a bump here where that coil was, but it's rounded and kind of tapered so that it's not really that noticeable. And at the ends, I'll kind of rub that out. Now the edges of the leaf, they're kind of thick. Try to lift this or I'll lift this side up. It's thick and it kind of looks clunky on the edge. And so a lot of people will take this at this point and they will um, just flip it over into a bowl or onto a form and they'll leave that thick edge on it. And I don't like that thick edge because I think it just kind of looks clunky. And so what I do is I go around and I taper the edges 
just by taking my thumb and I kind of pinch down on the edge and on these big leaves, I, I'm going to lift it up here, but I just pinch off a little bit of that edge just around it so it's not so squared. I don't want to get it so thin that it'll rip when I try to pull it off of the leaf form, but I'm just pinching off a little bit on the edges just to give that a little bit of a taper. And I'll do that all the way around. The only area that I don't do it is down by the stem. I leave it a little bit thicker there because that's where I'm going to pull the leaf and the clay apart is down by the, the stem. A lot of times the stems on these, some of the leaves have long stems on them and they don't work real well to leave the stems on. A lot of times they break off when you're trying to, to pull the clay off. So I'm not too worried because you can always add a piece of clay and add a stem. But even in finished wear, a lot of times those stems end up being um, just something that gets broken off in transit if you're going to show some things. This one doesn't have a real long stem. So I'm going to leave it thick down in this area. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more clay in here. I've got a little bit of a, a gap on this side. Just going to pinch a little bit more clay in here. Then around that edge, I will take that same sponge. I'm just going to wring this out and I'm going to get most of the water out of the sponge. And I'm going to go around those edges with just the damp sponge. And I'm just going to drag it along the edge to smooth that out and get rid of all of my finger marks and things that are on there. In the clay body that you work with, I'm working with um, Continental Clays Buff Stoneware, but really any type of clay body you can use with these leaves. I've worked with porcelain clay bodies. I've worked with low fire. I've worked with a lot of Raku clay with this technique, so any clays will work. And then I'll just sponge over the back to get rid of any bumps or imperfections that are back here. And then I'm ready to either drape it or slump it. So I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a bisque bowl, um, I found these wooden bowls years ago. It was a set of nesting bowls, and I just loved the shape of them. And um, these work great, but if you put the clay right against them, the clay is going to stick, and as it dries, it's going to crack. So you can do things like putting paper, newspaper between there. What I like to do is I like to take and put a bath towel over the back side of this. And then I put my bowl upside down on top of that. And I kind of am checking to see where the edges of the clay are so that when it slumps down into the bowl, I will get it centered and I don't have to move the leaf around a whole lot. And then I will take and lift up that leaf. I'll put my hand on the bottom of the bowl. Whoops, and the bowl just slipped down there. And I'll flip it over. And then again, I'll just kind of feel around the edges and see where I'm at with this. I'm going to slide it this way just a little bit. And then I will just take and press it down in a little bit. Now, the, the rubber leaf form isn't going to stretch all the way into the bottom of this bowl. And so this is at the point where I'm going to take then and I'm going to peel the rubber leaf form away. And you want to kind of do this slowly. You don't want to just yank it up. And especially where your main vein is, you don't want to yank that and rip the leaf. And I slowly pull that form away and I've got my clay in here. And then I can use either the damp sponge or a lot of times I use the washcloth just because it's dry. And then I can go and I can gently press this down into that form. I'm not pressing so hard that I'm adding texture. So the towel prevents the clay from sticking to that wooden bowl. So if you've got a glass bowl, I've gone to Hobby Lobby and rummage sales, and I've found big ceramic bowls, big glass bowls, plastic bowls. The bath towel really works nice in there because 
it allows you, if, if I needed to shift this at all, I can just grab the towel and I can pull the clay from side to side. I've got this centered well that I don't feel the need to do that. But if I needed to, I could just grab the towel like this and pull that whole piece inside the bowl without picking up the clay and messing up the edges on it. I'll go around now and I'll just kind of double check the little, um, any little chunks that are sticking out on the edges. And then I'll take a look at that stem area. Sometimes that stem area, I might have to go back with a tool and just kind of work that in a little bit because sometimes that gets a little beat up and banged up in that area when I pull it off. Um, and so that's how you get it into a bowl like this. Now, what about doing it more of a, a taller piece? So we are introducing a whole line of new pot molds. And my um, presentation tomorrow will be using these new clay pot molds. And so these are, are different from the other clay puzzling molds because we're actually going to clay puzzle on the inside of these. But you can also, they're great drape molds because they're low fire bisque. Um, and we can drape the clay over the top of this and the clay won't stick to it. Um, and we're also, tomorrow we're going to use, we're going to clay puzzle on the inside to make our pots. And then you make the saucer on the outside and it gives you the perfect size saucer by doing it on the outside. So this is the, the largest of the, the clay pot molds. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put this. So it, you could do the leaf design on the inside or the outside of, um, I should say the front or the back. So I laid this inside of the bowl so the, the texture side is facing up. So when I drape that over the top of this form, my texture is gonna be on the inside of my bowl. If I had done it the other way, before instead of flipping it into here, if I had just flipped it onto that form, my texture would be on the outside, like I've got on this bowl. The texture, the veining and everything is on the outside and the inside is smooth. So decide which way you want to do it to get that onto there. So since I already flipped it into the bowl, I can now take a towel. And, and the reason I do a towel with these forms is for a couple of reasons. One is um, when you do real big, heavy clay pieces and you drape it over something like this, it puts a lot of stress on the area that's right on that edge. And so the towel kind of prevents the clay from getting caught on that edge. It softens it. And it also kind of holds onto the clay so that that clay that's draping down the side isn't pulling so much and creating stress on there. And it also eliminates the impression of the bowl getting onto that piece. So now I've got this inside. I can take and flip this over. I'm going to remove my bowl and remove my towel. And now my leaf is over the top of that form. And now I can just gently take and create some tucks and some folds in this so that it drapes over the sides of this form. And I'm just gently taking and tucking. I'm not pressing so hard that I start losing the texture of my leaf form. And then this can dry. If I want to put some, some feet on it, I could take and do, I could do a coil on here to make a foot, or I could just take some balls of clay because you've got a little bit of a bump where that main vein was on there. I can take some balls of clay, score, and attach these on the bottom, and then press a board against them so that I get a nice even uh, ball on there that the bowl will sit straight. take a board and I can just take this board 
and set it on top and gently wiggle it and press it down and it will flatten those little balls of clay so that my piece will sit flat when it comes off of that form. So I'll leave this sitting on that um, clay pot um, probably for a few hours and then I'll just take a board and I'll put it on the bottom and I'll reach underneath here, pick up that pot and flip it over and pull the pot and the towel out. The towel also helps that if you leave it sitting on that mold, if you forget about it and it sits on there for days, that towel also allows for that clay to shrink and it'll get tight against the towel instead of getting tight against the pot. And there's less chance of that cracking if um, you do leave it on there for too long. All right, any questions on that technique? No, nope, there were some questions about are your towels wet or dry that you're using? I'm sorry, if what's wet or dry? The towels that you're using, are the, they wet the or are they dry? are dry. And so I always work with dry towels um, because if you work with a wet towel, it just gets muddy and messy. So a dry towel does work best. Um, it, it also will absorb moisture from the clay, just like the bisque will. If it's a wet towel on there, you're gonna get too much moisture on the inside. And as it starts to dry on the outside, um, you can get some cracking. And then there was a question on your leaf bowl that looks like it's a rusted finish. Is that a glaze or a special technique? That is a, a product that Mako makes called Magic Metallics. And so there is a um, steel metallic, which is made with ground up steel. This bottle is really heavy in comparison to the copper. It probably weighs three times as much because it's actually the bottom there, you can see it settles out. And then the top is basically the, the binder or adhesive in there. And you really have to shake this when it's new to get that mixed up. And this is a finish that goes on um, that is not fired. And so the steel goes on. And then once that, once you have two coats on, you apply this rapid rust and you can dab it on, you can spritz it on, you can sponge it on, and you kind of let that run and flow. And that gives you that rusted metal look. This is a small leaf that I did where you can see that that rapid rust kind of puddled in the bottom and you see more of the steel around the edge, but it picks up the veining in the leaves really nice. This one, is the, the steel with the rust and you can see kind of the dripping and flowing and it puddles in the bottom and on the back side of the leaf, it really picks up the veining and the textures in there as well. And then there's another one called um, copper and that has a product called green patina. So you apply two coats of the copper while that's still damp, you apply the green patina, again, either sponging, dabbing, um, spritzing with a, a spray bottle and that will give you the aged copper look. And so this one, I love that is one. Done with the patina, yeah. with the copper. Um, this one, I left a little bit more of the copper showing on this one. And the cool thing with these finishes is they are really permanent, and they are safe to use outdoors. Mako, I think at one time, and maybe they still do, they made this product and sold it to companies that did outdoor signs, that that the copper would actually patina and the, the steel would actually rust. So if I just put this outside, the copper will continue to patina on here. If I seal it with a brush on or a spray on sealer, that will protect it and stop that from, um, from getting more patina or more rust on the piece. So... Um, so it's it's really, it's a cool, fun product. I know most of us are really more into the glazes and stuff, but um, this is a, a really quick and easy way to do it. It also works well if you've got glaze pieces that didn't turn out and you really hate the finish on them and you're just sitting there looking at it going, I don't know what to do with this. These metallics will work over the top of glaze. The first coat that you put on doesn't stick a whole lot. It's kind of translucent but then that second coat grabs and it's a good way to cover up glazes that didn't turn out. It's not food safe, not dishwasher safe, but it will, I mean, you actually probably could put it in the dishwasher because it does hold up outdoors. A lot of garden art um, has been done with those finishes. This was, a, for those of you who have done the clay puzzling, this was one of the sphere shapes that I did with coils that was done 
with the rapid rust as well. So, all right. So how about making dimensional leaves? So if I just want to make leaves to add on to something, um, I did the presentation. This was the, the gourd that we did Is that in October, I think that we did this. And there are leaves on the top here. So you can make leaves to add on and adorn your pieces. This was the technique that I showed you guys with that bowl with the bark texture and the leaves. That's the type of finish. And I did a live on that showing the technique, the painting technique on this as well. So if you wanna make dimensional leaves, you're gonna take a slab of clay, again, probably close to a half an inch thick. And you're gonna take, let me get a bigger piece here to do this big maple leaf. You're gonna press the leaf into the clay. I'm just gonna tear a little piece off here. I didn't have a big enough piece of clay. Normally I would make sure I have a big enough piece to start with, but I can press the leaf into the clay and then I can either cut away the outside edges or I'll usually just go and rip away that clay on these smaller leaves. And then I do the same thing with the edges of this, where I flip it over then and I taper the edges just by pinching with my thumb. Because if you, I mentioned earlier, if the clay is too thin, some people want to do the leaves and they want to make them really super thin. And the problem is when you go to peel it away from the rubber leaf form, um, the rubber leaf form, it, the clay kind of sticks to it and it will... Uh, tear as you try to pull that away. Again, I leave it a little thicker at the, the stem area. Go around and I'm kind of pulling the clay up in these deep crevices on here. Clean up the edges a little. And then I just go and grab onto the stem of the leaf and gently peel that clay back to get you your clay leaf. And then these can be added on to pieces like I did on the top of the scored birdhouse. Um, you can take even around the tops of bowls, you can take the leaves and add them on. So if I really wanted to overdo it with this first bowl that we did, I could take and actually add leaves, dimensional leaves onto this piece as well. If I wanted to do a little cluster of leaves off to the side, um, a lot of times on the tops of vases, I'll do leaves like this when I do pumpkins. There's pumpkin leaves. There's lots of different leaves for doing um, all different types of, of designs. So when you saw, showed those magic metallics from Mako, you opened a whole can of worms. We've got so many questions about the product now. Okay. <laughs> so folks want to know, do they get fired? They do not. So magic metallics do not get fired. And I thought at one time, I thought, well, what if um, I used them with uh, like Raku? I was like, they got, they're made with copper. And um, I did them with some Raku glazes and the results weren't that spectacular. Um, they pretty much will burn away in firing and leave kind of a powdery residue like acrylic would. So if someone wants to use them, you would, if say you're using cone five clay, you bisque fire, and then do you just not glaze it and fire it all the way to cone five, six, so your clay is more solid, it's vitrified. Then you yeah. use the magic metallics on it as a cold finish, which is what we call finishes that don't get fired. And that's it. You're done. Seal it if you want to. Correct. correct? Yep. So There's you don't no glaze. additional firing to that. Yep. But you would, I, want I, with, you would want with five, six clay to go to five, six. You do want to take yeah, it to so that for, temperature. For durability reasons, going to five, six is good. And so... You know, going to five six, your clay is probably going to be vitrified, and so when you brush that first coat of the magic metallic on, whether it's the copper or the steel, um, that first coat isn't going to dry real fast, and it's not going to give you solid coverage. But you always do a second coat. So once that first coat dries, that second coat grabs, especially with the steel because it's such a gritty finish. Um, you'll get a second coat that'll go on there, um, and it will it will adhere because I've done it. I redid lamps that we had in our bedroom that were in back when burgundy and navy blue and hunter green were popular and 
they, I love the shape of the lamps, but they were ugly and very dated. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the steel on them and do the rust. And then those drips come down the sides of that lamp. And it was like brand new lamps. We bought new shades for them that were a little more updated. And I didn't have to make new lamps. So it's a good way to save ugly pieces or dated pieces. And these are opaque. So if you glaze something and you're really unhappy with that glaze, yep. you could use these to save it. Absolutely. Yep. For, for sculptural pieces. We should definitely have you do a demo on Clay Share about that because so many people are interested. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, and, it's, and I do sell them on my website. They come in two ounce bottles and eight ounce bottles. Um, and there are more colors. There's gold and there's... Um, a bronze color as well, but the, the copper and the steel are, are my two favorites in that, yeah. in that assortment. Sorry to get you off track with the leaves. So. No, that's okay. I, you know, when I did that finish on there, I'm like, I know people are going to ask about that. And so I'm going to, after this live, I'm going to go move those colors into the Clay Share Con specials and we'll do a deal on those too. We've got kits and stuff on those. So give me a little bit of time after this and I'll, I'll get those moved over and we'll run a special on those as well. Ah, awesome. All right, we've got two yeah. and a half minutes left. Do you have anything else you All want right. to I was help? just gonna show you guys some of the, the other leaves. Um, we just added, these were the two new, the pointed sunflower. There's two sizes of those. I showed you the, the two that were raccoon fired back there. Those have great detail on them. They have nice edges on them. Um, I'll just show you, this is the Sincerca leaf, which is one of our best sellers. There's an arrowhead, hollyhock. Some of these haven't been trimmed yet. We've got a ton of them cast and they just need to be trimmed and packaged. This is a Sinceria. This is a smaller of the um, burdock. This is the smallest one. We added two new hydrangea leaves this year. There's a large and a small that go with the, there's two medium ones that we've had for years. So we added two more sizes to that. We have a, um, crud, I can't remember the name of this one now, the Monstera. Monstera. And this one mm -hmm. you can see, we have to sit and cut out all of those openings in there. Um, uh -huh. Then we added some new fig leaves. This is the large fig leaf. That was, this piece was, I don't think I showed this one, was Raku fired. And then we added, um, a new line of kiwi leaves. And kiwi leaves are really cool. They're round oh. and they've got great detail and they make great little bowls if you're looking for great little bowls. And then we've got some new ones and I honestly don't even know the name of these leaves. Um, we just got these. And so I had somebody that contacted me and they said, I've got these really cool leaves. She told me what they were and I can't remember and I have to go back to her message. But there's four different sizes in these and they kind of have a heart shape to it's them. Kind of like a and bit of a so, grapey leaf looking thing, but I'm not sure. I don't know plants that well. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta find her email to find out what kind of leaves those were. So there's lots of different designs. We've got them all on special. You don't need to enter a code. Um, our website is learnfiredarts.com and we've got free shipping. I forgot to mention the other night, free shipping in the US oh, yes. 48 at fifty dollars. And um, it's not hard to spend $50 with all the different stuff that we have. So take advantage of that. If you're international, we do ship internationally. Unfortunately, there are international shipping charges. And I know sometimes people are shocked by that, but it is what it is. Our website's hooked up to UPS and USPS, and they do give pretty accurate rates for the shipping. Yeah, shipping something we just can't avoid and can't do anything about, sadly. Right. But that's that's all right. You fit you figure it into the cost of everything and doing business and the enjoyment yep. of making pottery. All right, two all right. seconds. Last right. leaving parting words. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks you guys. Enjoy the rest of Clay Share, and I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon, I believe. Yeah, you're back with us tomorrow for making planters you don't find in big box stores. Yep. I'm excited for that. All right. Thank you, Michael. As always, it's been a pleasure to have you here on Clay Share Con. Again, so Michael's been with us. This is third year. Um, so funny, the first year Michael did Clay Share Con, he was one of our last minute uh, folks to join us to do it. And I hadn't met him and he hadn't met me and didn't know all about you, all you wonderful Clay Share folks. And uh, he soon found out how amazing you all are and how many orders you all placed. <laughs> so thank you from Michael and me for supporting all these amazing small businesses during Clay Share Con. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break and we're gonna have Paula McCoy from Colors for Earth.
and she came to us from Michael Harbridge. He introduced us. So again, growing the Clayshare family through our connections. She's going to show you how to make a butterfly plate. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes for that. See you then.